Good morning and welcome to Solid Cam's eye machining challenge. This part has been supplied by BSC filters. The challenge is to provide a part that has been done using standard operations and we will show that it can be done more efficiently using eye machining 3D. So let's have a look at the part here. A fairly simple looking part. It's 25 millimeters wide, 21 millimeters deep, and 119 millimeters long. It's in aluminium 6082 T6. So even using standard operations, it shouldn't take that long to do. However, let's have a quick look at how this part's been done. First operation, face mill. Second operation, the contour to take the outside size down to finished. Chris, who programmed this part, has used pocket recognition using the let me show you the tooling list first. Oh, it's paused screen sharing. Piss off. Good morning and welcome to Solid Cam's eye machining challenge. The challenge was for companies to send in parts that use standard solid cam operations and we would look at doing these parts using eye machining uh, to increase the efficiency of the machining operation. In other words, to make it quicker. This part has been supplied by Chris Blake of BSC Filters. Let's have a quick look at the part. Dimension wise it's 25 by 21 by 120. So not an exceptionally big part, but still takes a little time to machine. Now we're going to be looking at the first side of this part only, so I've suppressed the back and the ends. Now let's do a quick simulation on this using the host CAD and let's have a look at the time that it takes to do this. Face off, take the pocket out the center, we'll look at the tools that are used in a moment. Rest machining uh, using the pocket recognition again. And as you can see, time's going on. Most of the operations in this part rely on a fairly small tool, which is a 2.5 n mil with a 12 mil flute. So a lot of work being done by one small tool. We've all been in the situation where <clears throat> designers have produced a part that has maybe a 1 mil rad in the corner but it's 35 millimeters deep and getting a tool to go down and take that out can be quite a challenge. Anyway, that's not really what we're here to look at today. So that's your toolpath. Quite basic, nothing wrong with it. Time taken 41 and a half minutes. That includes the drilling operations. We'll be including that in the challenge. So like we'll get a like for like uh, timing. Let's have a look at the tools that have been used. Tool 1, face mill and contouring around about the outside. He's used a 12 mil high coated high speed cutter. No problem with that. Next tool, D8, which is used for taking the bulk of the body out, an 8 mil end mill. Then we move down on to the two and a half mil cutter. Now using the pocket recognition here and rest machining you can see that it's only taking out what it needs to take. 
So it's a fairly efficient toolpath for this. Some profiling roundabout to finish off the edges. Again, down to the same depth using the cutter. And <clears throat> finally, a couple of pocket recognition operations down in the bottom, just to take out the bottom pockets, as you can see. Again, pocket recognition again here being used to finish out. Then we go into the drilling. Now as we're not going to be looking at the drilling really, so I'm just going to skip over these. Contour being used in there to finish off this upper level. 3 mil tool. Anyway, that's the basis of the part that has been, been sent in. Now let's have a look at the part that we're going to do for the challenge. Now I've used the same tool set with the addition of one cutter. I've added in a 4 mil end mill. <clears throat> which will go through the process and you'll see where I've used it. First operation is with the big cutter as before. However, we're going to be using the eye machining so I don't need to flatten the whole surface off. So if I simulate only this and do it on the solid verify, you'll see that we only actually take out the take out and finish the area that we're going to need to. Okay, so our eye machining uses the same tool. Now go in here and as I've just loaded the part, you don't need to do this, but we'll go through the, the calculation process just to give you an idea of how long it takes. As you can see, it's only taken a few seconds on this part. And again, we'll go to the solid verify. Now here you can see the island that's been left from the first tool. I'm going to run this. I'll run it fairly slow. You'll see how the tool goes down to a fair depth. We'll look at the depth cuts in a moment. It takes out the material using the eye machining patented morphing spirals. As you can see, it's very quick. And that has taken... just under two minutes to get to that point and we've roughed it down in the outside and that's taken about four minutes and 15 seconds not really a problem the pause there in the solid verification I've probably set my one of my settings wrong and it thinks it was going to crash into the side there. It just I've left it in so you can see that the crash operation does work. By manipulating the the values in it, it changes and it's it'll go out of. So that's our 3D operation. Now if I untick these two and look at what we've done now. We've taken this down to the bottom and I've changed over and used the pocket recognition with this um, D4 tool. It's a T9, 4mm diameter, 24 flute cutting length, 3 flute, and it's set for, it's actually set rubbish. So it'll take longer than it should have. <laughs> Oh, not to worry. We'll stop the recording. Good morning and welcome to Solid Cam's Eye Machining Challenge. This part has been supplied by Chris Blake of BSC Filters. Let's have a quick look at the part. Dimensionally, it's 25 millimeters by 21 by 120. Not a big part. Aluminium 6082T6. 
not particularly hard material, you can go pretty fast in aluminium anyways. Let's have a quick look at um, the timing that uh, Chris has achieved in programming this part. So we'll run it through the basic simulation and see if we get a time. As you can see, it's shown around 41 minutes to do this part. Nothing wrong with that. It's uh, not a bad way to do it. Face mill the top. Contour round about the outside. Use pocket recognition to take the bulk out using an 8mm tool. <clears throat> then use a 2.5mm long flute cutter. And to do the pocket recognition again to take out the rest material in the pocket. And then contour round about to finish off. Pocket recognition again in the bottom to finish out the edges of the lower pockets. And pocket recognition again to fill out anything else on the top. Then we go into the drilling. Well, we'll not, we'll not be looking at the drilling, etc. We'll leave it in the challenge part. Just to keep the comparison. The timing that we're looking for is only on this section of the program that I've highlighted. And this is what we'll be looking at in the challenge. So I'm going to load up the challenge part, which I did earlier. I've only made a couple of little changes. I've added in a 4mm long flute cutter uh, to take the place of some of the operations that uh, Chris used the smaller cutter on. And I've added one ID, one 3D eye machining operation and changed the way a couple of the profiles work. This is the same section of the program. You'll see there's one or two things have changed slightly. Our contour in the top just basically goes round about the area on the top that requires finishing, and that's done in one pass. The eye machining takes out the body and roughs out round about. Pocket recognition as before. However, this time we already have the body out. We've moved on to the new 4mm tool and we're only taking out the part on the bottom. We're using the same tool to finish profile around the top in these areas, using an extended step over so that we can catch any flat areas. Lower main profile, again, we're using the rest machining on profile to take out any areas that while left because the tool was too big and the finish in the bottom to the bottom then we now use the same tool as Chris simple little profile in the bottom to uh, spiral profile to take the pocket down to depth and again up here to finish this area we use a two and a half around the top here just to give us a final finishing cut again round that edge to finish that and the contour I think I left 0.15 on there for finishing just to make sure that everything on the final finishing cut would get in and cut nice and cleanly so apart from those changes everything else is as, is as Chris did it. Now let's have a look at the eye machining operation. We've only got one here and we've chosen the same 8mm tool that uh, Chris chose. In the technology wizard when we look at this we can see that we've allowed this to go as hard as it can. It's going to take two cuts at 8mm and one at 5 The ACP or actual contact point is the, uh, the the amount of the full one full spiral that uh, is in contact with the material. So the nearer a whole number this is, the more efficient the cutting is. There's less vibration. At the final cut here, as you can see, it's automatically put a small cut in. We're going to leave that as it is. It's not going to cause too much of a problem technology here I've set this to rest rough and I've left 0.15 on the floor and the walls 
I've set my scallop tolerance to 10% to keep it tight and we've got a helical link to take us in. So save and calculate and we'll let this calculate again and as you can see the animation there is showing where the toolpath will lie. Now let's simulate this and for quickness we'll use the quick solid verify and I'll slow this down so you can see it going. So as you can see it comes in, it goes in helically down to its depth, then it uses the morphin spirals to efficiently take material out. Next pass. It create at the end of each pass it warps back up the way. So it goes to full depth and then back up, full depth and then back up. You can't see the effect of it too clearly on a part like this as it's really a prismatic part. But if you have a shaped part, the effect is quite dramatic. So let's have a look at the full operation in the simulation here. And again, we'll use the quick solid verify and go right from the start. And let's see how the time takes out. As you can see, the eye machine recognizes that there's still material in the center after the initial cut roundabout. But it takes, takes that into account and there's no problem there. Now we have the 4 mil tool. Let's roughen out. And we'll finish in here with the 2.5 mil tool. It goes on and does the rest of the drilling as Chris had done it. And as you can see the time is now 19 minutes. That's a reduction I calculated it earlier, it's about 56 or 60%. So in these part, on a simple part like this that you would think would be quite quick anyway, it's reduced the time quite considerably. Okay, I would like to thank Chris for supplying this part and uh, if anyone else would like to put a part forward for the challenge then please feel free to do so. Thank you very much and we'll leave it for that for today.